Hi guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. Before we begin, uh, you might be able to see that there is a difference in frame rate, hopefully. Um, I fixed my OBS, I had a little bit of an issue uh, where my onboard Intel HD uh, graphics were conflicting with my Nvidia graphics because I'm on a laptop, they both have to kind of run at the same time, it's not one or the other. Um, but now I've set my OBS to only be using the Intel HD, which is what's rendering my actual monitor because I screen capture rather than window capture because window capture wouldn't allow me to say open up a window like that you wouldn't be able to get both you'd only get one um, so I, I need to use my uh, screen capture so that you can see it all um, so there we go you should be able to see an improvement in frame rate hopefully uh, if not then um, don't get mad you know please Please. <laughs> right, so in today's tutorial, as you might be able to tell from this lovely folder name, we are doing collisions. Um, I've had quite a lot of people ask me about custom collisions uh, and how to set collisions up correctly in Unreal, um, because often you'll bring in a, um, a model and the collisions are a little bit funky, they don't really do what you want them to do. Um, and that's because of the way that Unreal auto-generates um, collision. So what I'm going to do, oh, before we begin, um, you're going to need 3D sod, uh, 3 d You're going to need a 3D modeling software. Um, I'm using 3ds Max because I'm at university. I have the student uh, version of this. Um, I've got access to this for like three more years or so. Um, but I'm going to give you guys this bridge so that you can follow along. Um, you can use this exact bridge and you can build these um, these collisions exactly the way that we cover it in the tutorial but I have to point out I am using a student version so therefore legally uh, got to put this out there you cannot use this in a commercial product okay anything uh, any of the FBX's that I give you today you cannot use commercially um, because you are not licensed to do so and in doing so you're gonna have 3ds max rain all hell down upon you um, not 3ds max <laughs> autodesk will rain hell down upon you and will probably come at me because it will have my license encoded in it um but then i'll just show them this video and just be like here you go it wasn't me um so yeah uh no commercial for this just just learning this is for learning purposes only so i have the bridge already in here if i pop this up there you go. if we were to press play and we would try to use this bridge we can't use it if we jump on top we can Okay, now the reason we can do that is because of the way that Unreal automatically generates our collision. If we were to open up the bridge and we turn collision on, you can see this purple box around the outside. It's very, very thin. I'm not sure that you'll be able to see it too well. Um, but there's a purple box here and this is your collision. Now it does this because Unreal doesn't work so well with convex. Now convex is anything that's got a hole or a gap in it. So here, from this railing to this railing all this underneath is considered convex underneath these planks is considered convex underneath the railing itself is convex here to here is convex everything in between each plank is convex um, unreal will automatically fill those holes which is why it's kind of just a big cubic shape here that we've got around the outside uh, because it's recognizing that this is the top this is the very corner and the very edge this is another edge down here this is an edge here and, and you, you kind of get the drift it's taking the outermost vertices and it's using those to generate the the collision now we we can now i'm going to show you this it's it's not good practice um here under the mesh static mesh settings under details there are you know collision complexities that you can now i see so many people use this and i hate it um it, use complex collision is simple and what that's going to do if we click that that uh you can now see that the the purple matches the mesh perfectly now yes if we save that real quick this will let you use the the bridges collisions as intended um but don't do this um the reason we don't want to do this is because the collision is being um generated on a vertice by vertice basis so in doing complex as simple what it's doing is it's getting every single vertex and then finding where the next vertex is a uh, vertice vertex ver yeah 
dyslexic <laughs> it's finding out where every single vertex is and then it's going to rebuild the object using every single vertex uh, as a piece of data for this collision now on something very very simple it's probably not going to be that costly but when you start to do this for everything if you get lazy and you start doing this for everything then it's going to start costing you uh, performance because it's going to be when it's going to be calculating for every vertex every frame um, well not every frame because it's saved in but it's going to be rendering every single vertex for every object in your scene that you do this to um, and we don't need that because you look at this this character is never going to go under here He's not big enough to get under these gaps. He's not big enough to get under here. He's not big enough to fall through these holes. He's not big enough to get underneath here. Okay, so that's all data that's getting wasted. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to make our own custom collision using our 3D software. Now, this is the first time I've let you guys see me inside of a 3D software. Whee! Um, I, I struggle uh, getting back into the correct uh, control schemes when I switch between. I spend a lot of time in Unreal. Um, so here's a bridge. Now we've got our little guy on there. He was just there for um, he's there for moral support. We'll get rid of him real quick. Um, he was there for scale, so I could make sure my scale was correct. So here we have our, our lovely, lovely uh, bridge. Now what we can do is we can kind of replicate some of this in a way that's going to be logical um, for our collision. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to grab a box really quick. And I'm going to go into top view. And these are my railings here. So you can see my railing. I'm going to drag this box out to be about the right size. Okay. Now go back into perspective mode. And now I can just scale this to a point where I think that the collisions are going to be about right. So we don't want it to be quite so low. The railing's only going to be starting about here. So that's good there. Pretty decent. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a couple of segments here. I'll quickly convert it to an editable poly. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these verts and just raise them like so. Now you can see this is like almost like a very very uh, kind of block out sort of thing, and it it kind of is like you want to make these basic so that you know they're not costing anything to to generate inside the game. So now we have the collisions for two railings, pretty much. I mean, we could probably make these just a little bit nicer. So if we just quickly take these verts at either end, we'll just line, oh, come on, don't do this. We can just line them up a little bit better onto the actual railing itself, like so, there we are. And now I'll just duplicate this across. Now I'm not, I'm not just like telling you guys how to do all the, the shortcuts in here because, you know, this isn't what the channel's about. Um, well, hold shift and drag on the widget to to get a, a copy. I mean, I haven't done anything so far that's required a shortcut except for dragging that across. Um, everything else is just a case of like, follow me on the menu uh, and you'll be fine. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just hide those out. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to create a new box and we're gonna go to top again, press T for top. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of match this to our floor. We'll press P for perspective. And now what we're going to do is, ooh, I left my regular mouse back at my university, which is a, a right pain because he, he, I'm using one that's a bit dodgy back home. Now we're going to line this up as best we can. We're going to right click it, convert to an editable poly. And same deal now, we're just going to get the verts and try to match the floor. So, bring that down a bit. I'll probably just quickly add another connection in the middle here. Raise that one up, like so. Mm, we may need a couple more, so we're just gonna do this here and this here. And we'll connect those up, and then just raise those up 
as well. There we go. Because we don't want it to look like the player ever falls through. Okay, so now we've got that. And if we were to quickly just hide the bridge itself and bring up the two things, you can see now how that this is kind of representative of a very blocky bridge that we've just made. Um, now you, under here is still very convex. This is uh, this is not very preferable underneath, um, but that will be fine. We don't have, we don't need to worry about that. So the trick is we have the bridge now. You can see here on the right hand side I've got this called bridge. It's just called bridge. Now for this to work, we're not going to combine these different pieces that we've created um, for the for the actual collision. What we're going to do is we're going to select one and then what we're going to call this is in capitals UCX then underscore and then the name of our mesh which is bridge Oops. then underscore and then zero one. We're going to select the other one and we're going to do the same UCX underscore bridge underscore zero two and then for the bottom one UCX underscore bridge underscore Zero 03. Now UCX is the prefix for collisions in Unreal. Now what we need to do is we need to just select them all together. We're going to go to a file, export, export selected, and I'm not going to use the same thing. I'm going to call this bridge, uh, bridge two static mesh, and then we'll just export that out real quick. We'll head back to Unreal, and I've got my folder set up properly, so it's going to ask me if I want to import. I do. Very important here, we have this under the mesh auto generate collision. We're going to turn that off. Everything else is pretty much fine. So now we can press import. Now there's no smoothing groups because I haven't set up smoothing groups, so it doesn't matter. But you'll notice now on this little thumbnail here, you can only see the bridge. You see how it's exactly the same thumbnail as the other one. You can't see that, that weird skeleton thing that we made. And if we actually go in here and we turn on collision, you can see our UCX collision is in place. So you can see exactly where we made our own collisions. And if we were to drag this into the world and pull it up, the one on the right is the one we just made collisions for, and you can see that it's working perfectly. And we can actually get up on here and we can run on this as well. So there you have it. Although there is a way to use complexes as simple in Unreal, um, the amount of adverts that's being used in here is significantly less to the amount that's being used in, in the one that we just created, um, which is going to save you um, on performance and memory. Well, not, not like RAM memory, but you know, hard drive memory, um, because it's going to have less to load. Hopefully that's been informative to you guys, and hopefully the quality of the video is a little bit better. Um, so there you have it. I'm going to leave a link to the... Um, the documentation on collisions in UCX because there are more that you can go through. But this one is um, perfect for Unreal. Um, and it's very, very simple. It's very, very easy. Uh, the only thing that you need to keep in mind is these convex areas. So you couldn't just make, say, if, if these were connected, so if we connected these three UCXs and just had one UCX, it's still just going to read it exactly the same because we've got this convex area in there and it's going to create an issue. Um, so if you need a convex area, so anything that requires some sort of hole or gap, um, then you need more than one um, UCX for this to work. So let's show that once more. There it is. You can see the purple. That's the one that we've, we've just created ourselves and imported. And we can show that off here. Uh, so here we go. Collision complexity is just the project default. This is the one that we've brought in ourselves. And then if we were to quickly open up the old one, we have the collision here that's the complex to simple. Blit, it's gross. Don't do it. Lots of vertices being used that don't need to be used. Um, and that's it. Hopefully that clears some stuff up for you guys. Um, it's it's very good practice to get into. Um, I'll put the static mesh, uh, the base static mesh, just the FBX on its own without any of the collision stuff in a Google Drive and leave a link below so that you guys can follow along with this model or if you want to follow it along with another model that is perfectly fine. Ev like everything that we've covered today is, um, is the um, 
it's just the standard for for UCX. So as long as you don't, you know, block things up with invisible walls, uh, you should be fine. Um, also, in the description is going to be a link to my Discord channel. We've got some we've got some Discord chat going on over here. I mean, it's disconnected because me. Um, it's decided my internet wants to die again. Yay! Um, but I've got a, a Discord channel now uh, for you guys. I've got quite a few people in there already. Uh, it's just a quick way to get in touch with me so that if you need help on projects or whatever, I'm there. And then we can just hang out and chat like lovely, lovely people. Um, so yes, there we have it. Those will be in the description. Have fun, guys. Hopefully this has sorted things out for you, and I'll see you next time.